my beautiful people welcome back to my channel <laughs> hey if you are seeing me for the first time my name is Joyce Anyang. my people a lot has been happening in Nigeria hey now nah, man hey all the tiffy tiffy in the oil industry in our a lot of tiffy tiffy people in nnpc hey, hey. all this our uh politician they, they have been stealing our money all the they remove subsidy and they are telling us that they remove subsidy why they did not remove any subsidy they are still selling the oil and collecting the money and putting it in inside their uh, 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 shokoto and agbada my people hey i just want you guys to listen to channel tv where shegu wa was in uh, interviewing uh, me and uh him -huh. where he was interviewing prof yemi i just want you guys to listen carefully and then i have to show you people from channel and from arise tv the way shegun uh at not shegun um, rufai and uh, abati and uh, ayo were analyzing the way what has been happening the corruption that has been happening in the oil and gas sector my god <laughs> they cannot even give account they can't give account on how they have been spending the money now they have accused them of stealing the oil money they are you know this thing came even when peter obi was running for a seat of a president he came out and he said the people that are stealing oil they are selling out oil all of them they are still inside that government because he made an illustration that oil is not something like sweet that you can pack and put inside your pocket or bomb bomb or chewing gum that you, you cannot you know it, it said a lot of things that time that there's no ship that would come outside from nigeria to take oil from nigeria and take it out that people would not see them that everybody if they are doing the business together is these polit politicians the government officials they are the same people that have been selling the oil that they should forget all these things that they have been doing and today they have accused them the second time again so guys let's just listen on this interview that shegun is interviewing this uh, mr prof yemi before we will go to arise tv and listen there what the the analysis what i uh, rufai ayo and abati would have to say too so guys let's just watch bring uh some sense of it there are those who who will say <laughs> is there anything that i've not heard about these corruption 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 in the oil and gas sector now et as an institution will come forward to say these are the issues there are those experts who are saying that there are cabals there are those little individuals a uh, little in numbers but they are so strong that are holding the nation and the jugular and the reason why the economy of the country is at this stage is because the president took a decision on the very first day he got into office and the ripple effect is what we are seeing today if those few people who are holding us back are not the reason for this problem then we need to start rethinking our problem but then let's go forward i mean uh, you remember what happened in the house of representatives when they plan to uh, to probe uh, uh, the main uh, the, 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 uh, the downstream and the mainstream sector of the oil and gas sector the house and leadership has since resolved that because there are controversies allegations of 1.2 million us dollars exchanging hands if we were probing uh, uh, corruption in the nmc uh, but allegations of corruption is us already trailing and controversy back and forth but let's focus on the senate today Professor Yemi, okay, he's a senior advocate of Nigeria designate and he's an expert in energy law. He joins us virtually from Lagos. He joins us now live on the program. Thanks so much, Prof, for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me, Shil. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much. It looks like a deja vu to you, isn't it? When you hear probing of the oil and gas sector, well, do you think anything different will come out of this, Prof? Shil, um, I'm not as optimistic and that speaking uh, the truth. I'm not as optimistic that something will come out of it. I will be pleasantly surprised because of the personality 
who is sharing that from panel, talking about Snetor, where Mba Medele is a known person, Zanatebe's tested proven kind of, well, I, I don't think it should change who he is. So we have an activist in the house to probe, and we expect serious problems. By nature, and we should, we should get it right fundamentally, by nature, the petroleum sector has always been needlessly convoluted by operation, by structure, by management, by its politics. Even the OPEC itself is called a cartel. So that brings me to the origin or the, the, the trend before getting to where we are. We all saw and knew how petroleum industry bill, then bill, took almost 15, 20 years before it could see the light of day. We passed a series of templates, series of versions of the petroleum industry bill before we eventually had a petroleum industry act in its imperfect state. We've been having all kinds of probes, subsidy regime, scandal, crude oil theft, uh, bunkering, illegal refineries, until recent, what I call, I look at that which is blowing. You alluded to the uh, the incident of the House of Press, and then with uh, another uh, a major player. Nigerians are not interested in the inquiry, in the probing. Nigerians are interested in the outcome of the probing and getting us to do things differently in the petroleum sector. <laughs> the sector that is central to the nerves of Nigeria, particularly our survival as a country, we should get it right. Ordinarily, you don't expect the president to, deem it, deem it, to be the minister of petroleum. But because of the nature of the sector, successive government declares the head of state of the president as the minister for petroleum resources. That is an integrity issue. That is a governance issue. Does it mean we can't see that sector hope to a substantive minister? away or aside from the president. Of course, the structure that we had before was one that made N NPC limited. Then, needlessly conflicted, and NPC, old NPC defunct, was a regulator, was a sector regulator. The old NPC was also industry player. Now, with the petroleum industry had, attempts have been made justifiably to do things differently. And we expected that there would be kind of resistance. We are seeing the resistance now because at the level of NUPRC, Nigerian uh, Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, the Senate is in charge. The law, the hard give Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria extensive powers, oversight. Ditto for NPRA, Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority. Senate has a major say because they approve the appointment, the nomination of those who are to regulate. Now, the Senate is stepping forward in line with its constitutional duties and mandate to ask relevant questions as to what has been happening in that crucial sector. And Nigerians are expecting they want results, not just this should be one of those seizure probes because of what is at stake. Props. Uh, let me quickly ask you. Um, so there are questions raised. We have four refineries. The Wari refinery, the Potakot refinery, the Kaduna refinery, and all of these refineries that we have, the youngest um, uh, of, of, those, uh, of the refineries is older than 20 years. But they are concerned about the fact that Nigeria is paying those who work in these refineries. Nigeria pays almost every other time for the turnaround maintenance of these refineries. We've heard date and date upon date of when these turnaround maintenance we start. We even hear that we spent more than 1.5 billion US dollars in turnaround maintenance. Do you have an idea of who are those behind? Is it that there are deliberate attempts at not wanting, wanting these refineries to work? If these refineries do not work, to whose advantage? Who is going to be benefiting it? I mean, it can't just be ordinary that all of these refineries are not working uh, what exactly do you think the problem is, Prof? Shion, Shion, you and I are involved. Meaning you and I are not saying Shion or Kiba, no, you hear me, okay? Nigerians. Nigerians are the reason why Nigeria is the way it is. Both in the petroleum sector, 
both in the electricity sector, in the aviation sector, in the education sector, in all sectors. So we don't expect Europeans or Chinese to come and fix our problems because those are Nigerian problems. Those are problems that must be and should be fixed by patriotic Nigerians. Do you understand the kind of challenges we have in the food all this in the petroleum sector? Until we were able to take that whole step in the in the in the telecoms, we had the old nighter. A bureaucracy, public bureaucracy like NMPC, we have to do away with Nigel, even when he got his own GSM telephone license, nothing happened to it. We are about, we just started taking initial positive steps in the petroleum sector. I expected serious levels of resistance against the Dagger Refinery. It means it will no longer be business as usual. I job for the boss to reduce. Because the Nigerian government is not going to wait for perpetual, unending, turn around, turn in and turn around maintenances of worry, what I call another refineries. The, 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 the structure is now getting liberalized gradually. We're having modular refineries coming on board. We're having dangotes that will true come on stream fully. We are having Bua, who is going to which is going to come on stream subsequently. The sector will be free to hope for decent levels of competitiveness. Then we're going to have accurate picture. We're going to be able to have a bit of mathematical accuracy in the consumption pattern and consumption trend of Nigerians vis-a-vis -vis petroleum product. Talking about petroleum, talking about the digital and aviation firm. What we have currently, I'm sorry, a bottle of fraud. The, the, the petroleum sector has never been fully transparent. Yes, since and 2022, uh, Prof. So the, the government Prof. Prof. will struggle to get things strong for The yes, then sir. Minister of State for Petroleum said in 2022 that the refinery in Port Harcourt will be ready by December of that year. Mm. Um, sometimes this year, the NMPCL GC, uh, Group CEO, Melekiari, was quoted to have said the refi uh, Port Harcourt refinery will be ready by April of this year. I mean, of last year, in 2023. We are now in 2024. It will be ready, it will be ready, it will be ready. And these are one of the issues raised today on the floor, I mean, at, at the floor of the, of the adult committee pro, uh, investigative hearing, that I haven't spent 1.5 billion US dollars to repair a refinery. And those who will tell you that you can actually build a new refinery with that same amount. Yeah, that those who have debated it. And the fact remains that spending all that kind of amount by beautiful people, <laughs> well, let me just tip a little bit in here before we will go to Arise TV and listen to what they have to say in that uh, channel also. This Nigeria, this country called Nigeria, hey, I pity for this country. I pity. Just imagine what Shane is asking that they are they use they that is every year they will say they are paying workers to the maintenance of the refinery 1.5 billion dollars hey and every year they will say the refinery is going to uh, 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 finish that is the, the maintainer will be will finish in this or so year every the same politics every time and this uh, uh, prof uh, Yemi said that the problem of Nigeria is in Nigerians' hands, you know. So I want to come into that. Yes, the problems of Nigerians are in Nigerians' hands. How? How is it in Nigerians' hands? Because when people, the masses, when things are going wrong in the country, and Nigerians they will come out to protest to ask question to ask the leader to ask the politician why is this thing like this the next thing they will start buying the innocent protesters they will start buying the innocent nigerians that came out with placard just to ask a question the problem is that in nigeria right now Nigeria is no more democratic. We are not practic practicing any more democracy. We are practicing dictatorship. Yes, I say it boldly. Just imagine the corruption that is in, 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 in oil sector. They are just selling this oil 
pocketing money in their pocket. Why Nigeria are suffering? But uh, uh, Tinubu don't wake up one morning because they know. Okay, now they are protesting that Tinubu should remove fuel subsidy. Can Tinubu remove it? What is difficult there is is because of fuel uh, subsidy that people are suffering. It's because because you remove sub uh, fuel subsidy that people are hungry. Why can't you remove it so that people this will be okay again? That when you want to remove subsidies, uh, sub fuel subsidy, you make provision for people. You arrange things in, in a right way so that by the time you remove it, people will not suffer. People will not go begging for food. I that's my God. I know how many numbers call me in a day just to beg for more feeding money. There is no work. People that have been working, a lot of company has fall because they cannot manage anymore. What is there for Mr. President not to remove the first subsidy so that this can be okay again? He will not remove it because that is where they are gaining. He will talk to the public that, oh, I have removed sub a fuel subsidy. Why behind, they, they did not remove anything. They are selling the oil back to back, selling it and sharing money among themselves. They will share money. They will sell oil and share money. They will borrow money and share money. Everything is just between them. Why are they so wicked? Why is Nigeria so wicked? And now they, they will come out and say they are... Uh, Proving, prove. Have you ever, if my people, have you ever seen anything in Nigeria that they prove or that they are? In this, I don't know how to say it. They are probing, probing. Every time they are probing. Have you ever seen anything in Nigeria that they prove that it come to pass? <laughs> we will be there. They are probing, 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 probing. At the end of the day. The thing will just die like that. I remember when Peter Obi was saying this thing that the oil year that nobody they are selling that they will make account account will not balance. Okay, the oil who where is all this oil going to? Where is it going to? That same Nigeria we don't have light. That same Nigeria the only thing that we have is petroleum. And now people are buying petrol, a liter of petrol, 1,000 naira. So how many liter will you buy? For example, if you want to travel far, there's a country that has oil. We are buying, if we, sometimes they will say for scarcity, scarcity. People would be buying oil in uh, millions of naira. They are probing. Every time they are probing. <laughs> How long? We have been proving all this thing for years. Anyway, my people, let's just watch, go to um, Arise TV and listen to what you people know. Your take on the story. I'm happy about it, but I'll tell you what my soul is telling me. A part of my soul is divided. My soul is divided this morning about this investigation. A part of my soul, the optimistic part says, yes, we must see this investigation go on on TV to be able to get to the end. And there are some questions I would like to ask, probably for a forensic audit of the NMPC, for the NMPC to probably come clean and tell us, is subsidy still being paid? Mm -hmm. Why is it difficult to be able to get profit out of the NMPC? And why is that the NMPC that ought to be making money like the likes of Saudi Aramco has now become a money borrowing machine? Hmm. Why have they not been able to stop crude oil theft? Who are the participants Rufai, in crude oil theft? Rufai, I like this man. Why is it that the NMPC has collected over one trillion and the refineries are not yet working? The Potaka, they said, mechanically complete in December. We have not seen anything till date. Hey. Why is that over the years, the NMPC was still paying for those refineries when they were not producing anything? Okay. Can we have an investigative audit into even people working there? Can you imagine? Is there anything going on? What's the state of where they store this petrol in tank farms across the country? <laughs> a part of me wants a holistic foreign, foreign forensic audit. And a part of me says, I'm optimistic that the National Assembly will do a good job. But the second part of my soul good day, good day. always reminds me of off your mic. When the truth was about to come out as regards the NDDC case, there was the off your mic scenario. And that matter died like that. So the second part of my soul that knows Nigeria so well is telling me that hope this is not going to be another off your mic scenario. 
In fact, that part of my soul is already saying Rufai is beginning to look like that. They're already making allegations of $1.7 million <laughs> bribe somewhere in the mix, which was denied anyway. But for the fact that it was even mentioned at all, the part of my soul is already saying Rufai, you don't see. Nigeria, you hope and believe in. But I want to hope and pray again that my, that optimistic part of my soul <laughs> is going to win, that the National Assembly mm. is going to get to the end of this, mm. and we're going to have proper forensic investigation. We are going to get down to brass tacks and know what's really happening. Yes. But the other part of my soul is contending. The other part of my soul also reminds me of Farouk Lawan. The other part of the triumphant, the optimistic part. Thank you. Dr. Bati. Okay, what are the issues here? The issues are as follows. The NNPC Limited has been under siege in recent times with people accusing the NNPC Limited of all kinds of things, attacks on military, on the institution, and the renewed uh, you know, concerns about the opaqueness of the uh, NNPC Limited operations. I'm on record, as having made a point here, that military is not the problem with Nigeria's oil and gas industry. I have said on this program that the problems are located elsewhere. If anything, I'm not a military uh, spokesman, if anything, it's under military that we first had the first proper audit of NMPC. Before him, nobody did it. It was under him that NATI, which is the Extractive Industry Transparency Organization, first said that under military, there has been an audit. It is under him that we even had, first had of mechanical, uh, of a refinery in Portaco being mechanically completed. So I think it's in order that military yesterday try to defend himself, to say that NMPC Limited, under his watch, is not a thieving, organi a thieving organization, mm -hmm. is not a saboteur organization. If anything, he has been able to move the needle forward. And I stand by that, and I, I accept what he has said. However, we all have concerns about the refineries. We were told yesterday at that uh, Okoyemi Bamidele led session that, look, under the watch of this, uh, 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 of this government, $1.5 billion dollars mm -hmm has been sent, spent to revive a refinery. Uh, refinery. refinery. Okay, what have they done with the $1.5 billion? Uh, dollars? Nigerians don't have uh, fuel in the stations. So that's an aspect of it that the NMPC Limited people would have to explain. The second issue, which I found also interesting, is that the representative of uh, the Dangote group yesterday, Aliyu uh, uh, Suleiman, who is uh, the strategy officer, said that NMPC Limited has been giving them up to about uh, 60, is it 60 barrels? Yeah, whatever, I don't know what they call it. 60%, he said, of their needs for crude oil. The story out there is that NMPCL has been starving, NMPC uh, has been starving the yeah. Dangote the refinery. Yesterday, we got another side of the narrative. <laughs> That's another point. Number three is that Farouk Ahmed, who said Dangote refinery was uh, giving us uh, substandard uh, crude oil, mm. or diesel, diesel, to be specific. So, my beautiful people, you guys have heard hey, all this oil, all this gas, everything, they are so afraid. What I'm seeing in this matter is that the NNPCL are so afraid right now that Dan Gote is involved. You see that even Dan Gote himself has come out to expose a lot of things. Even when he said that Nigerians are using uh, Nigerian money to go and build a refinery in Malta, everybody was shocked and surprised. Yes. You see? So they are coming at now just to be doing all these things because they are so afraid of Dangote. Because Dangote, the way I see Dangote, if they, they are not ready to work with Dangote, if they want to frustrate Dangote, Dangote is ready to expose Nigerians. is ready to expose them. All this so-called NNPCL. It, the, Dangote is very, very ready to expose them. That is why you see they are so afraid now, coming out to say they are not thieves, they are not uh, saboteurs. Okay, where is all this money? According to what Rufai said. You know that I love this Rufai so much because he said it the way it is. Yes. He said it the way it is. Okay, people use 1.5 billion just to, to renovate a refinery in uh, Portaikon. Where is the refinery? 
Where are the workers? You people have been paying every month. Where are the workers? Where is the refinery? Show us. If you people say you people are not, you are not thieves and you are not servitors, then make things transparent. Show Nigeria. Let Nigeria know how you people are managing the oil sec uh, sectors. Let uh, um, NNPC uh, come out and tell us how they are managing the oil sector, how they have been selling the barrels of oil, how much are they selling one barrel, how, much, how many is going out, how many is coming in. My God, this country, this country, my people, is better for us. It's better for us to just sell Nigeria and share the money among us so that everybody would go to its own way, places, you know. This is what I've been saying. Instead of us to come out and talk and fight, when people come out now to, uh, to protest or to fight or to ask them questions, they will command armies and police to start buying people in the street, to start, uh, start committing havoc. My people, where, I, where is this country going to? A whole Nigeria, the giants of Africa, you know, that passport is not even value anywhere anymore because of the corruption that is in Nigeria. Nigeria is like a group of people owns Nigeria. A group of people owns Nigeria that they, they, all the affairs of Nigeria is in their hands. And we say we are practicing democracy. It's not possible. It's not possible. This is dictator in Nigeria. There's a lot of dictators in Nigeria. You can't come out and talk. You don't have freedom of speech anymore. When you come out to ask questions, the next thing they will order people, they, they will order their talks to come and buy you. They will order their talks to come and buy you. Huh? This is getting out of hands, my people. This is getting out of hands. What are we going to do that Nigeria will be better? We have the money. You know how rich is Nigeria. This is a, a Nigeria. This is a country that has oil. If you, if the, our leaders are so honest, Nigeria could have you, uh, Dubai and Nigeria. They will be competing each other. People, Nigerians are running to Dubai. Dubai now to work. To look for work, they have been, you know, every time they would any okay. Look at now in London, what is happening in London? That all foreigners should leave their country. Nigerians should leave their country. Okay, when they come back to Nigeria, which country are they coming to stay? Eh? You cannot say that. Ah, let me go back to my country. After all, my country is even better. Let me go back there. Which country are you coming to stay? Is it a country that the government has so corrupt? Is it a country that you will come bandits cannot allow you to have peace? Is it a country that you come you cannot afford anything? Is it a country that you come and robbers and cannot allow you to drive safely in the in, in the highway? Which country are we coming? You even bring a car in that country to repair. You will not get good mechanic to fix your car for you. Everybody is so corrupt in that country. So corrupt that you cannot even know who is who and who is not who. My people, I'm so this country. Sometimes now I know a lot of people will come to this country to abroad. They want they, they are fighting in everything to be a citizen to get their passport because of their country. Is the that Nigeria you you get Nigerian passport to do what with it? If our country is better. The European will be even be begging us to come and get their passport. We will say for what? Why must we get your passport when my country is better? Let me just come here for visit off and go back to my country. I have a good job doing there. My business is booming. Everything is going well. I'm just here for, for visiting. I'm just here for studying. I'm just here to do one program or the other. I will go back to my country. But people come here. People are... We are passing uh, the Mediterranean uh, Sea just to come to abroad because Nigeria is not doing well. People are passing through desert 
dying on the way because Nigeria is not good. If that country is good, who will want to come to another person's country? You know the suffer and you know the rate of racism and the suffer that we are suffering in this country. But when you turn behind and say, where am I going to? Is that Nigeria? I will go to Nigeria to do what? To start how? Where am I going to start? You open business, you will not see anything. You, nothing is even moving in that country. The only people that are benefiting in that country is the politicians. The politicians stealing our money, stealing our oil, stealing everything. One group of particular people, they have own Nigeria. Nobody has to say anything. Look at now. People come out. Let us talk. Mr. President, we are hungry. Hungry want to uh, 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 buy us. Please help us. Bring some things down. When these things are down, then money will be enough. This will go down. Mr. President is coming out to count his blessing, count his achievement. Instead of him listening to the masses instead of listening to the people is counting his own blessing anyway my people this country anytime i talk about this country i feel like i don't know i don't know how i feel like something should just come from just blow like this and blow all these politicians away you know one serious breeze like that kind of uh, wind that came when uh, 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 that fish, fish that swallow uh, 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 Jonah should come from from somewhere and just open his mouth and swallow all these politicians in Nigeria. Just swallow them, carry them and throw them in one forest where they cannot even find their way to come out. You know? Anyway, my people, thank you very much if you have watched this video to this time. I really appreciate every one of you. Please subscribe, share, and I will see you in my next one. Thank you and bye for now.